Hi everyone, welcome to The Homegrown Artist. My name is Barbara and today what we're going to be doing is playing around with the watercolors I received from Jerry's Artorama. These are the Turner Artist watercolors. Um, in my opinion, they are very, very great watercolors, very pigmented, very easily re-wet. Um, and I've just had a lot of fun exploring with them and, and playing with them, even though I've had a lot of trouble um, with pain lately and my hands shaking and stuff like that. Um, pain usually tends to make me really anxious, so um, I have panic attacks and then my hands just kind of shake and everything. So I've had trouble painting in the past. <laughs> And uh, this morning, it's actually 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning right now, um, and I couldn't sleep because of the pain, so I figured I might as well come in here and paint something for y'all. I actually was um, setting up a way for me to do painting on the couch because that's basically what I've been told to do is lay in a reclined position. I have a lot of stuff going on with my back and then hypermobility so that my ribs keep moving around and stuff. I had a nerve block a few um, days ago, and... It's just been causing a lot of trouble, and I am never pain-free, so it's no fun. And I don't know if you can see my hand shaking here, but we'll try to do the best that we can with the painting today. Um, but the thing that happened with my living room setup, like I had a little stand for the iPad to go there so it could go over my little lap desk and record. But what happens is my dog ends up chewing up the watercolor paper. My cat wants to chew on my water brushes and then also step in the paint. Um, so I actually have little cat footprints of phthalo green on my carpet, which was not fun trying to get out, and it's still not out because phthalo green is, of course, a standing color. Um, so that didn't work out trying to record in my living room. So I'm pushing through the pain and trying to get this video up. Um, another thing I wanted to say before we get started is this is probably going to be my last video for a while. I'm going to be taking a pretty long sabbatical from any kind of work unless it's just something playful and fun for me to do without any stress. And uh, the reason for that is, like I said, is the amount of pain. I have surgeries coming up. Um, and then I also have a local art class that I'm fixing to start teaching and that's going to be hard enough on its own for me to get done, especially as the only way I can get a, get to a place is walk because I can't drive due to epilepsy. Therefore, I'm gonna have to be walking to this art store um, on the days for the classes and everything. And walking lately has actually been causing me lots of pain with my back and everything. So anyway, to get over the pain story and everything, we're gonna get into the painting for today. Um, but before we get started with the painting, I did want to say that when Jerry sent me the 33 tubes of Turner Artist watercolors, they also sent me um, some of their brushes. So I got the full set of the Kalinske Sable brushes along with the um, Rockwell Artist Brush Easel that comes with it. Uh, so you get, I think, 12 brushes. Let's see, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine brushes. I don't know where I got the number 12 from. So you get the size 20, flat, the size 12, 8, 6, 4, 2, 1, 0, and then 3 over 0, which means uh, like 0, 0, 0. So that's the smallest, smallest brush in the set. So these brushes are synthetic, but they, like their name, are made to mimic the way that Kalinsky Sable brushes work. And I will show you a comparison. The only actual Kalinsky Sable brush I have is actually just a little Chinese um, paint or Japanese. I'm not really sure. I think it's Chinese calligraphy paintbrush, but it's made with real Kalinsky Sable. And I will do a comparison on how much water this little brush holds compared to even the biggest brush on there. Um, but these are really good brushes. They're not too expensive. And uh, I mean, they're they're costly, all brushes are, especially artist grade brushes. And these I would consider artist grade brushes. Um, but if you buy them in the set, it comes with this little easel and everything. So you get your money's worth. You get a full range of brushes that you would need as a beginner in watercolor. Um, so this easel is pretty awesome. I'll go ahead and close it and show you how it does that. So you can put your paint brushes in it and carry it around. Um, keep your cats from eating them. Um, but also, the cool thing about it is it is double-sided, so you can put your small, I think it's made to put your smaller brushes here, and if you can't see, my cat, again, right here, <laughs> because I leave it kind of open like this while I'm painting, 
and flat because I want to, when I put a brush in there, I don't want the water to be going down into the ferrule of the brush. I want it to dry um, without messing up the brush. Um, you could put your brushes in like this to dry, but then you would have to in put them upside down. Let me get a different brush. You would have to put them upside down so that they aren't, they're drying from top to bottom instead of the water pulling back into the ferrule because that tends to ruin your brushes. I hope you can see that on the camera. Another thing about this easel is you can't really use long handled brushes. Now I don't tend to use long handled brushes. Um, this was actually a mistaken, mistaked purchase. Um, I meant to get a short handle, um, a Scotta Versatile, and I ended up getting a long handle one, but it's worked out. I actually enjoy using it. Um, but even brushes that have long tips, like this one right here, when you put it in there, it's still a little bit too long for, for the case. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so whenever you go to close it, and I, I don't want to close it because it's going to mess up one of my favorite brushes, but when you go to close it, what happens is the brushes are going to get all bent. So you want to make sure the brushes you put in here are the ones that fit in there. These right here fit, and then the silver black velvet brushes fit, um, some Grunbacher brushes fit. Um, I had earlier these brushes in there, some of the little squirrel brushes. This is the Princeton, Neptune, and a Raphael. Um, <clears throat> and then another cool thing that the stand does, and I hope that you can see this. I think I'm at a weird angle. Let's see. So it has this little thing right here. So normally it lays flat like this, but you can pull it, press the button and pull the string up. And I need it to be standing up to be doing this. And you can make it into a stand, so it can stand at pretty much any angle you want, as long as you have this kind of stopped there. And then you can also pull it up to an even tighter stand like this. And as your brushes get wet, it has this area right here where you can put them on there if you so choose. Um, so that's pretty cool. And uh, I have really enjoyed having this stand because like I said, it has kept my cats from trying to eat um, all of my brushes. So Jerry's, whenever they sent me the paint and the brushes, they were kind enough to send me the big 15 milliliter tubes of paint, letting me share those paints. So um, at the end of this painting and everything, I will talk about a giveaway where I will be giving away all 33 colors of the Turner uh, watercolors that I have in the same exact palette as well as a set just like this. And we'll talk about that closer to the end of the video. So what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and take most of these brushes out. I don't think I need the little tiny ones for today's painting. We're doing kind of a loose painting. And just kind of move everything aside. Um, the reason I take them out of the easel is because it's hard when you're painting to kind of just grab them out if you need them fast. So I would suggest um, if you have this evil, evil, if you have this easel and these brushes to just take the brushes that you think you may use out of the easel um, before you start painting. I've just learned that it's kind of hard for me to pull them out. Um, so yeah, so we'll talk about the giveaway closer towards the end. So I've been playing with these colors for a while and like I said, my hands have not been steady so I haven't been trying to do any fancy paintings or anything. Um, I've just been playing around on my couch and uh, so I have these paintings here. Um, these are just some of the worst paintings I've ever done. Um, but it's not the paint's fault. As you can see the paint is very beautiful. It was just me being on the couch and not really planning anything out. As uh, Angela Fair says, don't work past your plan and in this, other than the slanted background, I had absolutely no plan. Um, so I ended up just doing weird flowers. I don't even know if that's flowers in nature. And then here I was just practicing um, the idea of some negative painting with, um, it's a, a style that Linda Kemp uses a lot and obviously I'm not that great at it. <laughs> so I need to work on that. Um, and then this is another painting that I did with Turner's. Um, and it kind of got messed up by my cat. She likes to step in 
the paint while I'm painting. Another reason I can't record in my living room like I planned. Um, but this is a painting that I'm going to be doing uh, classes on in the future. Um, and then just some loose little practice paintings. This one is bleh. Um, this one's not finished yet. It's going to be like a little poppy field with the pink uh, clouds and purple clouds with the sun kind of shining through. Um, this one right here was actually requested for me to do and they're all 5 by 7 because uh, at the store that I'm going to be teaching at, they want to teach 5 by 7 sizes so that the people can take the paintings home with them and have enough time for them to dry. And he really liked the painting that I did, if you've seen any of my other videos, where I had the uh, leaves layered in a negative style. So I'm working on that negative painting style. Um, and this is just a background that I've started. But I've been playing around with the colors as much as I possibly could um, in the living room. It's actually really hard to paint in your living room with animals. Oh, drives me crazy. So anyway, I've just been playing around with them using the brushes that they gave me and learning to use the brushes as well as the paint that's something that uh, a lot of beginners don't realize is that even painters who have been painting for 10 years when they try new equipment new paint new brushes anything like that they have to get used to the way they they work as well and each brush is going to act a little bit different for instance this little brush right here is squirrel which uh, Jerry's Autorama does offer squirrel brushes, mimic squirrel brushes, um, but it holds tons and tons of water compared to a brush like this, and I think they're the, let's see, let me get the same size. I don't have the same size, uh-oh. Yeah, I do, okay. So here's a size four in the Mimic Kalinske. And then here is a size 4 in the squirrel, and you can just see just by the fluffiness of it how much water it can hold. Um, so they act a lot different than each other. So along with the paints and how they act, you have to learn how the brushes act as well. So that's what I've been doing, is just playing around with the brushes and, and learning how they act and comparing them to, like I said, the only actual Kalinsky sable brush that I own. Alright, so we're going to get started in the painting. I'm going to quit running my mouth. So, I have a little towel here. And then I have this right here, this little wooden, wooden board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet, this is a 90 pound sheet of Arsh. Um, and I'm going, going to wet the back and the front and put it on the wooden, wooden board. And by doing that, what's going to happen is the wood is going to kind of suction that paper um, the water is going to kind of pull the paper towards the wood. And so as it dries, it's not going to have any wrinkles or anything in it. And this also works on plexiglass, which I need to get, but I haven't gotten yet. It can work on boards like this. However, mine is stained with paint and all that stuff. So I didn't want to accidentally mess up the watercolor paper um, while I was doing that. So what I normally do is I go ahead and I start off just by spraying spraying the paper and I try to make sure I get all of the back of the paper as wet as possible and then I'll go ahead and take this big giant flat brush and today I'm actually using the Magello water bucket which I'm falling in love with because you can have dirty water semi dirty water and super clean water and they also have a little section right here for if you need really 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 clean water and you contaminated all these parts which has happened to me and then it has a section right here where you can put your brushes as they dry which is amazing and I was getting tired of in the living room having to use uh, two cup holders to hold my brushes so so we're gonna use the wet uh, size 20 flat and we are just gonna paint that water across the paper. I'm going to go in the same direction so it's not to kind of mess up the fibers of the hair, fibers of hair. the fibers of the paper um, and just making sure that everything is wet and you can spray as much water on there as you want to. It depends on how long you want your paper to be wet. I am going to go ahead and spray the wooden board as well. Uh, plexiglass or something like this works a little bit better than wood uh, because wood does soak up the paper um, just a little bit more than 
or a lot more than plexiglass or something that's not absorbent. Um, but the wood is the reason that um, everything dries really flat. Uh, wood or cardboard is something that soaks up moisture. Um, and so it doesn't allow for buckles and stuff to happen. So even if you just start off painting this on a piece of plexiglass, um, a good thing to do would be to go ahead and put it on a piece of wood like this so that it dries flat without warping. So this eliminates the need for um, stretching 90 pound paper. And I used to not believe in 90 pound paper at all. I actually used to not use it ever um, because the first time I tried it, it just warped everywhere. And it was the first, the first time I tried painting was super loose and I was just throwing water and paint and stuff everywhere and I was like, oh, this isn't gonna work. Um, but I've been learning just like all of you and found that it's actually really cool to use 90 pound paper in this style. You do need to make sure that there's no air bubbles or anything underneath it. And usually what I do is spray a lot more water um, rather than using a brush. All right, so this just ensures that our paper is gonna stay wet for a while. But it is gonna dry like a normal piece of paper would. All right, so we have it all wet. So I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm now going to the uh, number 12 round, the biggest brush, uh, biggest round brush in the set. And I'm gonna start painting. And at this moment, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and speed it up and just let you watch me paint. Um, because honestly, I'm horrible at talking through painting. Um, and then I'll just do a voiceover or something afterwards and tell you kind of what I'm thinking and what I'm doing. So here we go. All right, voiceover over Barbara here. So what I'm doing is using Rose Red from the palette um, to add kind of a background for the trees. I want the rose red to be kind of like the light coming from behind the trees. So imagine it if it were the bright, bright green that you see behind the dark green trees. And then I use um, the cobalt turquoise, which is the, the paint with the two separate cobalt colors mixed in, not the single pigment one. It's just a little bit more dark and intense and uh, continue making those tree forms. I also add a horizon line and then try to add a few areas um, that are going to be the reflections in the water. So here I'm switching over to Thalo Blue, which in hindsight probably wasn't the best color to switch to. Um, it probably would have been better for me to use Cobalt Blue just because it's a little bit easier to lift out. Um, so when I go back in later, it's a little bit harder to lift out this Thalo Blue. Um, but it turns out okay. Uh, Composition-wise, I do not like when I added the distant trees in the right. It just kind of messed up the composition of the scene. I feel like I should have added just one more kind of middle side side size tree there. Um, but that's something that you learn throughout painting is that not every painting is gonna be a masterpiece, but you learn something from every one. So here what I'm doing is using the number four round and uh, just using water, I was pulling out some kind of like ghost limbs or just lighter trees. Uh, in the background and then again adding some of that color uh, in the bottom so that it can look like reflection and trying to do some similar things that I do to the um, area above the horizon to the water and here you can see the paper is more ready for that um, pulling out limbs with the water um, technique so I do that some more here and you can see how cool it looks when that happens because it does look like kind of like ghost leaves which is really cool And just adding some more reflective stuff and lifting some of it off so it doesn't become too deep in the reflections. I want the surface area to be uh, a lot more, have a lot more deeper value than the reflections. So here I'm using that phthalo blue, the rose red, and then a little bit of turmeric to make a very dark purpley blue so that I can add deeper values into the painting for the tree trunks and the limbs and all that fun stuff. 
and I am not a professional tree painter. This is just really fun to do. And the fact that these brushes get so pointy that you can do it with the same brush and not have to switch to a rigger is just amazing. So I really enjoyed making these tree limbs and kind of went crazy doing it. And I'm varying up the color just a little bit so everything isn't exactly the same, but it's still a dark color. Uh, and then adding that same color to the distant tree so it looks like there's darker trees back there. And then I felt like the composition again was missing something, so I decided to add another tree to the right. But I feel like I, I made it way too tall. It should have been smaller than the other trees. Uh, so something to think about for myself in the future when I'm working on on a painting like this. So like I said, every painting that you do, even if you are a master watercolorist, is not going to turn out perfect, especially if you work in a loose form where um, watercolor is your master and <laughs> you're not ma the master of it. Um, you kind of just let the watercolor do its thing. Then you're, you're going to go through more than one of the same type of scene. Um, here I'm using the rose red and spattering it with my brush and just flicking it with my finger because I could not find my toothbrush. And then I also sprayed a little bit of water so that some of the spatters would kind of flow out and some would stay, um, stay solid or stay in that little round shape that they made. And um, then I also added some purpley blue spatters as well. And here is where I think personally the painting kind of gets a little out of hand is with these distant trees. I worked past my plan. I had not planned to actually add much stuff to these trees and then I did just because I didn't like the the composition and how it was turning out so it kind of ended up ruining this painting. Um, so I will be practicing this painting again in the future but leaving out um, those distant, distant trees or keeping them much, much lighter than the trees in the foreground. Uh, so here I am mixing uh, the phthalo blue and the turmeric and the rose red again to create the horizon line and then just kind of pulling it out a little bit um, to create a few watermarks uh, and doing the same thing here just to get kind of that motion in the water. And I'm adding some more um, reflections in the water. So right now I'm not worried about the exact colors that I'm using or um, the value because I am going to spray all the colors. They will end up being lighter than the what's above the horizon line. And then I'm using that uh, picking up color with wet water on your paintbrush method just to kind of create more ripples in the water and give that water effect. <clears throat> and then I, for the reflections closest to the horizon line, I do add more value and emphasis to those. Um, and then I try to darken the left side of the trees with a darker um, mixture of that, those same colors. And here I'm just spattering water on there because it's just fun to do. Um, I really enjoy spattering water. It kind of gives you the same effect as salt without the cleanup. And then here I'm taking the flat brush and lifting out some highlights in the trees so that it can look like the sun is maybe coming in from the right side. And here I was just adding uh, some more details to the trees just kind of make them look more realistic. And again, lifting out those highlights. And I'm not, I'm not really scrubbing. I'm just laying down water and then lifting it up with the paper towel. Because I know that the phthalo blue mixed in there is not going to lift up very easily. But it's going to lift up enough if I let it sit there and then pick it up with the nap, napkin. And I'm doing the same thing down in the bottom for the distant trees. So actually as I'm looking at this painting, I think 
for the future composition of a painting like this, I may leave out the tree that's in the center because right now the one on the right looks very, very good. Um, here I'm using a bigger brush and adding more um, stuff to the horizon using kind of a dry brush uh, motion so that the actual horizon line can seem like it was reflecting into the water. And then using that big brush again to add more texture into the trees. And again, working past my plan and not thinking, I sprayed it with the water bottle, um, knowing that the texture <laughs> is going to go away whenever I spray the water. And the whole point of me doing that was to add texture. So later on, after um, watching this, <laughs> me painting this, I am going to kind of fix that, the texture in the center of the painting. But that's about it for this painting. Um, so yeah. Uh, and I am heat drying it with the heat tool just so that we don't have to wait for it to dry. All right, guys, so here's the painting um, finish and everything. It's definitely just a loose style painting because nothing looks natural or anything. But this is the type of stuff that I like to do. I, I enjoy playing with the color and seeing what I can do with the color and blending it and everything and spatter. And it's just more fun. Um, and I've realized lately with me being sick that... Um, this is more my style of painting. I don't find it necessary to draw things, trace things, and stuff like that. That actually stresses me out more than life almost. So I just tend to like to just doodle with the paintbrush. Um, I don't like to draw and calculate and find out where things are supposed to go. I just, I just want to play with the watercolor and so this is more my style of painting. I've been trying to learn in the past how to be more realistic in my painting, but it really just turns out that that's really just not my style. Um, I think practic practicing it is gonna help me in the future with my loose paintings, so I will know um, how to make things look more realistic in the loose style paintings. But I really, in really and truly just enjoy doing this. And this painting was so easy. Um, it's on 90 pound paper, which is amazing, so, um, the thing is, it is warped right now, but it wasn't warped as I was painting it. And the reason that it's, it is warped and not completely fat, flat is because I did take it off of the board and use a heat tool to dry it. And I used the heat tool um, as we were painting to dry it so that um, I wouldn't waste time or anything. And so I can get back to y'all. Um, but if you leave it on the wood and it stays flat, what happens is, is it just, it dries completely flat. So you have a 90 pound piece of paper that you can do um, crazy wet things on all over the, pa the painting and uh, still have a flat sheet of paper, which is pretty awesome. So that's a little technique I learned uh, mostly from Linda Kemp. She does it on plexiglass, but then I saw a few other painters doing it as well. And I am a lazy painter. <laughs> I don't like taping things. I don't like stretching things. This is so much more easy to do. Uh, the only thing is you do have to start off wet and wet. You can't start off um, wet on dry and then kind of blend it out wet on wet and that in those circumstances you probably do need to use 140 pound uh, or higher paper and tape the paper down. But if you are starting off wet into wet and then working your way up through um, the levels of dryness on the paper. Say you start off super wet and then wait until it still has a little shine, but it's not um, so wet that if you drop color in it, it's just gonna burst everywhere. Um, but it's wet enough that you can put highly pigmented paint in there and um, it'll pretty much stay where you put it. Um, and then you have to stop at a point, at a certain point where no matter what you add, it's gonna be too wet for the painting and it's just gonna cause cauliflowers and blooms which in loose paintings and stuff, those are not all that bad. I actually enjoy those quite a bit. All right, so now that we're done with the painting, let me move that out of the way. We can go ahead and get into the giveaway. So for the giveaway, I mentioned some of this stuff earlier. What I have is the set of nine of the Mimic Kalinske brushes from Jerry's Artorama, the extra set that they sent me. Um, and then I also have an extra easel that they sent me as well, the Rockwell Artist Brush Easel. Um, and you can put all your brushes in here. And 
we also get the Master's Touch covered palette with 33 wells that will include all 33 of the um, colors that I received from Jerry's Artorama. Uh, so with that, you can pretty much start watercolor painting with the palette and the brushes, especially if you're new to watercolor. Um, the only thing you need to get is paper. Uh, and the reason that I did the painting on the 90 pound paper is to show you that there are options out there if you don't have money for the expensive paper, but say you want Arsh paper. If you buy the 90 pound paper and start with that, but work wet into wet and learn how to practice um, the level of wetness on your paper and how much paint you need to keep it from bleeding and all that stuff like that, it will make you a better painter. Um, so if you are a beginner in watercolor and you don't have any paper and you're thinking, oh, I can't afford artist grade paper, that's not true. Um, Arsh 90 pound paper is really, really inexpensive, especially if you buy it in sheets. I think I got 10 sheets for $27 from Blick, so um, not a bad deal. All right, so, and the sheets are 22 by 30. Uh, that's the size of a normal sheet of Arsh paper. Um, so you can break it down into about, I got 10 sheets. This is probably a sixth of the sheet, maybe a little bit less, maybe a fifth of the sheet. So you can get 50 paintings out of that. So that's a good deal. Um, and then with the brushes, I do wanna say when you receive the brushes, do not put, try to put these little plastic things on. They're still on there now, and there's still gum arabic there, like keeping the brushes in a point. Um, but when you get them, go ahead and take them off, because when you try to put them on, what happens is you end up like spraying the hairs of your brush, and they can sometimes get bent down like this and ruin your brush. So just take those off, throw them away, and put the brushes either in like a cup like this. Um, that's how I store my watercolor brushes, unless I'm using this right here or just store them in here and you can this can be a forever storage place as well um, and I did want to show you the difference between the type of brush that I have um, and the mimic one so this is actual sable hair right here and of course they make way better sable brushes but I just want to show you um, some of the differences between them so I'm going to say that these are probably similar in size because this one is just a little bit too small. Um, it's probably closer in size, but I don't think it's going to hold the same amount. Maybe we'll do all three. So we'll do these two because they are closer in size. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the brush in water. I'm not going to you know, put it on the side like this or anything. I'm going to put it in water and see how much water the brush actually holds. So here we go. And this is rough paper, so it's actually kind of harder. Um, but that's an actual, let me push this back so y'all can see, the actual Mimic Kalinske, and I can actually probably spread this out a little bit more, um, just how much water this little tiny brush can actually hold. And then we'll go with the, oh, I'm not supposed to tab it, with the Mimic Kalinske. And you can see that it's almost even. And that's a smaller brush. If I were to use a bigger brush, it would hold a little bit more water. So that's really great. They do hold a ton of water. Um, and you can tell kind of the difference though. You can see the Kalinsky hair plumps up like a squirrel brush whenever it is wet. And then these do not because they are synthetic, but they do hold tons and tons of water. Um, so that's a very, very good thing. Um, another difference is they keep their points like amazingly well. I've used this brush so much. This is the main brush that I've been using. This one and this one right here. Um, this one the most actually. Here, let me get them wet and reform the tips. Uh, and the tips don't fade really fast as you get in most synthetic brushes. These are excellent quality brushes. They do act similar to Kalinsky Sable, um, although not exactly the same. Um, but the way that they paint is very similar. And the tips on the brushes are just phenomenal. So I really, really 
do love these brushes. You can see in the packet right here how fine the tips can get. So you can make some super sharp lines with even the biggest of brushes. Um, well, it's hard to do on rough paper, but you can get pretty small lines. You can see that with um, a size 12 round. And that's what you want in a watercolor brush. So I was just going to talk more about those brushes, kind of talk them up because they are fantastic brushes. And now I really want to try the Mimic Squirrel brushes. <laughs> um, but for the giveaway, um, it's a really easy giveaway. And like I said, I'm too sick to create more videos in the future and I will be taking kind of a sabbatical. Um, so all you have to do to enter into this giveaway is give this video a thumbs up comment down in the comment section down below. You can comment about anything um, and I will pick a winner. I'll do a random generator this time and pick um, on Monday the 3rd, which is two weeks from when this video will be posted. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Very, very easy giveaway. It was very, very nice of Jerry's to send me two sets of brushes so that not only I could try them, but I can give them to someone else to try. And then all those tubes um, allowing me to try those out so that I can fill this up for you and it be ready for you to receive in two weeks. All right, so the rules for the giveaway are extremely simple. All you have to do is give this video a thumbs up um, comments in the comment section down below and then on Monday the 3rd at midnight is going to be the end of the giveaway that's when it's going to stop so Tuesday um, sometime Tuesday the 4th of September I will announce the winner of the giveaway in the comment section down below here as well as on Instagram and Twitter um, the bad thing about this particular giveaway is I do not have the funds to do an international giveaway, so it is not open internationally. And I do apologize for that. I had my last giveaway open internationally, but that's because I had saved enough money so that I could ship that internationally. Um, I don't always have the money to ship internationally, and for some reason, shipping from the U.S. to any other country besides Canada tends to cost thousands of dollars. Not really, I'm exaggerating, but it's really, really expensive as opposed to other countries shipping to us is relatively cheap. I don't understand it, but it is way more expensive than I can handle right now. So, uh, sadly, it is only open to um, the US and Canada. Um, but you can still leave a comment down in the, sec in the comment section down below if you like the video or interested in the products or anything like that. I would also like to give a big shout out again to Jerry's Autorama for allowing this giveaway to, to happen. Um, they were nice enough to send me two sets of the brushes as well as the 15 milliliter tube so that I could put them in this palette and have a palette giveaway as well so that I can share the Turner watercolors that they allowed me to use and um, that was just amazing of them. So again, I just want to say thank you to Jerry's Artorama. Um, so yeah, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I know my videos are so long but I just tend to ramble and I can't help it. <laughs> Um, so anyway, that's the, it for this video. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys probably in the new year. Um, like I said, I'm taking a long sabbatical, although I do have some videos pre-recorded that I may put out sporadically just to keep my channel going because I don't want it to die or anything. Um, I do want to start again, but I, I need time to heal, like I said. So yeah, again, hope you guys have a great day, great week, and enjoy the rest of the year, and I will see you guys again in January. Bye, guys.